Hey, greetings everybody. Gleecon here again with another episode of Lore of Warcraft. On our last episode, we started the Frozen Throne content in Chronicles with, with um, kind of a recap of how the Scourge broke free from the Burning Legion's control. And now the Burning Legion's like, oh crap, maybe the Lich King is like a threat. We probably need someone to take him out and they start eyeing Illidan. So stay a while and listen as we continue that strand of thought with Servant of the Legion. In consuming the skull of Gul'dan, Illidan Stormrage had acquired otherworldly knowledge and strength, but transforming into a demon had also made his presence known to kill Jaden. From afar, Kill Jaden reached out to Illidan with an offer. If the former Night Elf destroyed the Lich King, he would be granted anything his heart desired. Illidan was intrigued. Given his history of fighting the Legion, he would have expected Kill Jaden to see him as an enemy, not a potential ally. Clearly, the Demon Lord needed him, and he thought the former Night Elf would simply bend the knee for a few scraps of power. Kill Jaden knew nothing of Illidan's singular quest to annihilate the Legion. Though it took great effort, the former Night Elf buried his true thoughts deep within his mind and hid them from the Demon Lord. Illidan feigned allegiance to kill Jaden and accepted the offer, seeing it as an opportunity to learn more about the Legion. He was also eager to rid the world of the Lich King. In his view, the entity was nothing more than a Legion-forged weapon. The sooner he culled the creature from Azeroth, the sooner he could focus all his attention on the Legion itself. From what Illidan knew of the Scourge and its vast numbers, a frontal assault against the Lich King would be impossible. He had something else in mind, something more suited to his sorcerous abilities. The Skull of Gul'dan had granted him knowledge of an artifact called the Eye of Sargeras. It could act as a conduit for Illidan's own magic, amplifying it and allowing him to strike the Lich King from a great distance. There was only one hurdle to overcome, and it was immense. The artifact lay across the sea in the tomb of Sargeras, an ancient structure on an arch archipelago known as the Broken Isles. The Broken Isles had once been part of the Night Elven Empire, but that was over 10,000 years ago. Illidan knew little of what dangers might await him there now. He needed allies to help him recover the Eye of Sargeras, but he could not ask for assistance from the Night Elves, not after Malfurion and Stormrage had banished him from their lands. Moreover, Illidan was being hunted. The Night Elf Watchers, who had guarded him for millennia, were furious that Tyrande Whisperwind had set him free, none more so than the Order's leader, Warden Maiev Shadowsong. The epitome of the Watchers, Maiev was a militaristic proponent of the law who dedicated her life to watching over prisoners and hunting down dangerous criminals. She saw Tyrande's liberation of Illidan as more than an act of recklessness. She saw it as treason. Tyrande had killed many of the Watchers to unleash the Betrayer. Maiev would never forgive her for that. Never. Nor would she allow Illidan's storm rage to walk free. Illidan knew that it was only a matter of time before the Watchers found him. With little other choice, he reached out to creatures from his past, the Highborn Sorcerers. Um, I didn't know that there were Highborn Sorcerers left. I think, so we did know he was going to go to the Broken Isles. Um, which kind of sets up some things for Legion, but I guess that's also interesting. So just goes to show you how many of the, the regions and all of the expansions were from these first three games. Burning Crusade, Draenor, that's from as far back as, well, the beginning, but at least Warcraft 2. Northrend, that's from here, Warcraft 3. Cataclysm redoes the old lands. Um, Pandaria, they've talked about, well, I guess none of these lands really talk about Pandaria. Um... So I guess there's that. That's sort of new, although of course we have talked about its past. Yeah, so that one might be the first one that, where they branch out to something. Um, Warlords of Draenor's stupid time travel crap. Um, but yeah, Legion now takes us to the Broken Isles, which is cool. And then BFA takes us to um, Zandalar and Kul Tiras, which also those existed. Um, so really, you could argue Miss of Pandaria um, in this expansion to, or not expansion, but the bonus campaign, 
depending on when it was made, if it was made, because I think there's some Panda characters in that, um, but depending on when that bonus campaign was made, it might have been made after the fact, in which case, yeah, it's a, it's a stretch. Um, we'll see how things go here, but um, Shadowlands would be another one where they've talked some about that, but same that and the Dragon Isles that we're talking about right now, like the Dragon Isles really haven't been mentioned anywhere in the lore. All right, cool. So we have, we could keep talking about this stuff at length, but I'm sure some more thoughts will be jogged and we'll keep the conversation going next time. This one's in the pipe five by five. Thank you everybody so much for watching and for listening. And I will see you on the next episode of Lore of Warcraft.